Reunited and it feels so good. Reunited because we understood. Back again. Back again. Lisa's back. Tell a friend. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Ashley's back. Dude, we're back. Your mom is back. Season two, yep. better than ever. We're Buckle like a up. fungus. Pack We're like a snacks. fungus. You can't get rid of us. You, you think you've nope. gotten rid of us and you're on living your life oh, and then all of a sudden you show back up just at the right time. Mm -mm -mm. We, we, uh, I don't know how long this episode is going to be. That's my favorite part about podcasts is I don't have any producer in my ear telling me like, rap, rap, rap. We got to go to break. Uh, but we have a lot to get to. Because we're back Lisa and McCaffrey. better than ever. So let's go. We're back and better than ever. So in case you are just finding us for the first time, Thank way to go. You. Your life is about to get totally transformed. Better. Let's. I guess we should do, because again, this is episode one of season two. So there may be some people that have okay. just discovered us. So maybe we should do like a little bit of an intro. Everyone sort of knows who you are, but let's, Lisa McCaffrey, uh, standout soccer player at Stanford, married to my favorite Denver Bronco, Ed oh, McCaffrey. I thought you were going to say uh, Rod Smith, because he's mine. <laughs> well, <laughs> shout out, Rod. Uh, you guys still live outside Denver. You have four amazing adult sons. Most people are familiar with your second born. Christian. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I remember his name. I remember he was the second one. Yes, I win. <laughs> Woo! Yes, Christian McCaffrey. Yes, the mother of Christian McCaffrey. He Okay, so he's a running back for the Niners, for those of you who maybe don't know. And he's what? He's scored a touchdown in like 800 straight yeah, NFL you never games. Count now. your money that... while you're sitting at the table. There'll be time enough for counting <laughs> when the dealing's done. We'll talk about it at the end of the season. Let's just get back to winning. I don't care about it. I care about it. I don't care about it. Yeah, okay. But he's Fair done enough. well scoring touchdowns in a row, I guess. Honest to God, I try not to listen or think about that because truly all he cares about is winning. And let's go. Eye of the Tiger. We're going to have I the tiger, yes, and it's been a little bit. It's it, it's it hit yeah. a rough patch. Three three losses, which no one was anticipating at the beginning of right. the year for the Niners. And that's okay. Yes. However, I thought he made a very good point, yeah. Lisa, the other day when someone was asking him if it sort of felt like yeah. the sky was falling. And, and what he did said, he say? no, not at all. When he joined the team last year, around this time, they were three and four. Nobody was panicking. Calm down, everybody. Calm down. We got this. We're going to regroup. Yeah. Everyone needs a bye week. This is the perfect time for a bye week, and we're going to come back stronger and better. I truly believe it. I'm manifesting it. It's one thing we do on this show is we, we are the queens of manifestation. We manifest a lot. Queen. <laughs> Some good. One, maybe not so good, but that's okay. Well, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we, we are, are very good at it. We win so the rest that... of the seasons. So, yep. We're uh -huh. all good. So yep. we learned, we learned a lot. Uh, losses, the Super Bowl and I feel like we've learned a lot and no more. We're done. They're done with we're done with those. We got three. Three right. is the lucky number. We put those behind us. Um, and we should also mention you you have three other incredible sons who are all doing really well, too. Don't Max, them. your oldest, is killing it in Miami. Yeah. His first year coaching. All Max is the... Uh... It is. I mean, Mike McDaniel, what? Like, this is Max hey, McCaffrey. They didn't team. do this last year when he wasn't coaching there. It's all Max. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Coach Hoff. Pay attention to the details, <laughs> folks. Uh, sweet baby angel Luke is having a great season Luke at is Rice. down at uh, pr uh playing for the Rice Owls, yep, and they're doing well, they're Owls. having a great season so far, yep. So that's fun to watch. I was, I was just checking out his stats, he's got eight touchdowns, yeah, same. I, I honestly don't know. He's had some what he's, I think, most famous for this year is getting his helmet ripped off every time he scores. It's insane, literally, it's happened, I think, it's three or four times. He's and we're, we're laughing, we're like, you need to patent the helmet rip off and then the two the pointing in the air like that's his signature that's what he does it's so bizarre that it's literally i think it was the fourth time and it happened again last week and they and after the third time they get that he got a new helmet and it hadn't happened for a game or two and then it happened again somebody ripped his helmet off and boom so we're, we're do you think he could get an nil deal with like a chin strap company? either that, that we thought he was like getting new, like really good haircuts he thought somebody would like yeah he's trying to like showcase his hair and that's why he's getting mm. the helmet he wants the helmet to be ripped off so he can showcase his good hair unlike his mom um i don't know we don't know we don't know what's going on but his helmet it was just so unusual because i don't think i've i've rare you rarely see that ever it's see like it. happened yeah. to him in particular like four times so Anyway, let's keep those. Well, he's scoring a lot of touchdowns, which is great. First player we in the modern him. era to play without a helmet. So. <laughs> Go, Luke. Uh, and then Dylan, yes. your third born, he finished up at Northern Colorado yes. last yep, year. Done. And 
And yeah, and and he's he's moving away from football. Absolutely, at least for right he's now. branching out on his own. He is he doesn't want to be in football, which I respect and we respect. Yep, he's working here in Denver, and um, yeah, he's doing great. He's uh, oh, one of his jobs. Got a couple jobs. He's selling cars. Oh my god, I would buy a car from Dylan McCaffrey. Like, not good because he needs he they need some business. You're right. in you're in the uh, uh, market for a Mazda. We'll get yeah, yeah. I mean, who isn't in a market deal. for a Mazda? Sweet deal for a Mazda. That was Ed's first car, for the record. It was a Mazda. And so that's, was, that's why I dated him, because he got the car. I'm like, oh, my gosh, calm down, really. <laughs> it wasn't the seven-layer cookie. It was the Mazda. <laughs> it was definitely the Mazda. That's, that's my priorities, is what car. Yeah, definitely I'm after the car. Oh, well, I'm glad that the McCaffrey family is doing great. And I one last thing before we get into my background. This is kind of the first season in a little while that Ed, that you've had more Ed time. Yeah, Ed's not coaching right a now, lot which of is coaching Ed, around, yep. which is awesome. And, and I'm like, I really am. I was thinking, I was, we were talking the other day and I said, how is Ed doing? It probably feels like he has a new lease on life because I don't think when you're, when you're in coaching and you know this more than me, so tell me if this is true, but I think when these coaches, they get so in it, they like forget that there is another whole world. Yes. Right. Outside so of, consumed with. You were so consumed every not week, consumed. everything. Yeah, so you don't, you know, you need to get your head. His head is out of the clouds. It's clear as day. He and his buddy, <laughs> I don't even think I told you this, invented a game and it's actually really fun. And although, he, what's it called? It's called Pepper Pong. So feel free to look it up and buy one. They're not crazy. It's a great Christmas Pepper gift. Pong. It's, yeah, literally invented a game called Pepper Pong. They have, now they're putting together the national rankings. So it's a cross between pickleball and ping pong. So Ooh. they patented the, the fence, like not the fence, the net, sorry. So you, and you can do, you can play it anywhere. You literally can play it on the floor. That's the beauty of it. And you just like mark your, you play it on any table, play it on the back of a car, whatever you can, you, you just like make the area you want to play on. And then you break out the net that's, that's expandable and it stands, stands upright. And they have three different peppers. It's all a play on peppers. Um, pick a pepper. One's like a heavier pepper. They all bounce a little different. So you pick a pepper and then you play to 11. Um, and I have to say it's really fun, but they're like putting out rankings and stuff. And as of right now, Ed is technically number one, but for the record, the truth, this podcast will give you the truth. I have beaten him six out of three times. He's won three times. Yeah, I beat him six times and he's getting ranked number one over me. Is that, I, I don't get it. I'm so upset about That's, it, but anyway. The, the system is rigged, so I'll rigged. just say that. It is so I rigged. mean, because that was going to be my question is how how much better are you than Oh my gosh, a hundred percent. It's, it's I'm yeah. so much better than, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's yeah. bad, but as of now he's got the ring cause he's been ranked. He's had the official ranking and I haven't. So that's his, that's why it's like, well, let's, you're let's, coming for him though. You're coming right. For I'm him. nipping at his heels right now. <laughs> but in, oh, okay. We're going to link that. We're going to link that in the show. I'm going to so send you, you, I'm going to send you a pepper pong. It's they're actually, it's we're blast. getting, we're getting close to Christmas. Right. And you know what we you know. do? We'll, we get so nervous when we're watching the away, we don't go to the away games. So we'll watch the um, away games home. So in between, like when they go to commercials, we'll it, like have a game really quick. We'll have a play. And our nerves out. It's like the perfect thing to do. It's so fun. So that's that <laughs> you wonder what we're doing with the commercial breaks. We're playing pepper pong. <laughs> You, you should live stream this. Yeah. Oh my God. Just, Great here. Watch I'm just spitballing here. I think parents you, fight. You could find it's fun. Watch us that. get in fights. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Well, that sounds like you guys have a lot going yeah, on. Pick I guess we do. I'm writing it down. Um, okay. <laughs> now, I, I guess I'm more important what everybody wants. No, way less. Yeah. What has been going goes. on in your life? Who cares about you? What's been going on in Cora's life? That's all I care uh, about. Well, let me tell you what's going on in Cora's life. Okay. So I've got two kids. I live in San Francisco. Uh, my husband and I have a six-year-old son and a four-year-old daughter. Hot husband, Cora, hot husband for the record. Um, so yep, who was dressed as Ken last night so for good. Halloween. We're recording this I thought the he day was Zoolander like an idiot. He was Ken. He was, oh yeah, but it was similar vibes. Yeah, whatever. whatever. Like that. Um, but I'm a, I'm a sports broadcaster for the Pac-12 Network at least for a few more months. <laughs> Um, I may be a full-time podcaster soon. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second, but really quick before what we they want, further, give the people what they want. Let's do the podcast. Full -time you don't podcast. want someone in your ear going, cut, podcast. cut, go to commercial now. No, we want to hear the full story because there's a lot to tell. It's <laughs> a lot to tell. It's a lot going on. Um, I really do though. I just, I, I want to like pause. Cause I did mention we were doing this the day after uh, Halloween. We're recording this. So how is Cora doing is your question. Yeah. How is my daughter doing? Well, she woke up this morning, you know, after like eating her weight and candy last nice. night and staying up until 10 o'clock. And she was just full on face paint, which was not part of her original costume. She was a knight, but she woke up with like black paint all over her face that 
uh, Wait, so you, <laughs> last night at the end of the night, our friend had us over for a party and, and all of a sudden this mom comes up to me. She's like, I'm so sorry. My daughter just painted Cora's face black and red and white. Like, I hope that's okay. And I was like, oh yeah, of course. Is it face paint? She's like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. It might be house paint, well, but it's fine. Turns out, <laughs> not, I don't, not face paint. <laughs> Oh, didn't quite come off. Oh no! Like so you did morning. bathe her so, before bed, though. I did not bathe her before bed. Oh. No, nope, I did not. Well, no. I might be yeah. So a she's at school. Like call here. I, who knows what <laughs> what the teacher's saying? But I think that is to say thank you to the teachers, oh, yeah. all of you out there who have to watch and take care of and teach kids the day after Halloween, because I, kids are not at their best on November first. No. Let's let's and just say neither that. are so probably quick, parents moment of gratitude and a prayer for all the teachers out there. We love you. Yeah. Especially the ones that have to work the day after Halloween. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, there mm -hmm. was a school, I think it was a school here in Denver that, that had school off the day after Halloween. And I thought that was genius. Brilliant. Or at least do a late start or yes. something. Yeah. Right? Let everybody get their no ducks one's... back in order and whatever, celebrate. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, but it was, are it you was one of those people that should say Halloween's on a weekend, like every, like a Friday, you know how like th every Thursday? Mm, oh yeah. No, I you think, like I think as long as you could just take the next either day or morning off, I think I'm good. I like it being on the 31st. I think that's good. Okay. Fair. Yeah. I mean, are, are you suggesting like we should do like a Halloween observed? Um, no, I don't do like the observed the crap. Let's not do that. Let's not get tech. Let's not go to that's I can't do okay. math. Let's okay. no math. We'll leave Halloween away. We'll like leave Halloween the last away. Friday in October, something like that. We've got other balance yeah, to, yeah, like Thanksgiving, like Thanksgiving rotation. Exactly. Right. right. That's what, that's what I was suggesting possibly doing for all the teacher's sakes out there and the parents' yeah. kids' sakes. I thought that'd be easier. We'll, ta we'll, we'll, that. we'll, put that, we'll put that up. I'm here. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to put well, that up. Colleges list. do Hollow Weekend. I know that because I have a kid in college. Oh. They do Hollow Weekend. And it's this one, it was since it fell on a Tuesday. It was the weekend before is when they did all their, their costumes. And what did Luke go as? Did oh Luke my gosh. Up? What did he do? He was, he was going to do a lumberjack because he's got a lot of flannel, but I think he switched and did, I don't even remember. Isn't that terrible? Isn't that awful? Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad you really tuned into your kids. Yeah, class. I really care a lot. I don't know. Who cares? He doesn't, I don't get to dress him up. So I don't care. Out of sight, out of mind. That's who? True. Luke who? Yeah. What? That kid raised himself. He's fine. He knows how to put together Halloween costumes. He did raise himself. I remember the first time we met and you were saying, I think he was, he was now, I think it was right after Dylan left for college. So he was the only one that was going to be home. And you were like, man, we haven't parented that kid and we are going to parent the shit out of that kid. And I thought we would. No, we weren't home. And we were, he was alone like almost every weekend. It was insane. It was so, it's such bad insane. parenting. It's horrible. Or maybe really great parenting. I Looking back, I say. think he is the most well-adjusted of the four. I hate to say it, but sorry. I think. But yeah, I think he is. Yeah. I mean, it was like my friend used to say who has four kids, like the first is kind of a throwaway. No offense to Max. all, Why do you, you know, yeah. Max and the first, because you overparented. Totally. So and we did. So, oh my gosh. I apologize so all the time. I'm like, I am so sorry I we overparented you. So, so. I think he's doing just fine too, though. I mean, yeah, he's, you know he's what? He, that suits for, suits him for the job he's in. He's so conscientious and such a pleaser, and and he's in the right the right job, and and he loves it. He's in there in Germany right now. They're playing in Germany on Sunday, so awesome. Yeah, he's gonna try to get find a pint somewhere one night when they have a little an hour off <laughs> when they have a minute you, you off. Knew. <laughs> You you knew you knew even back then like each each kid gets what they need from their parents That's, yeah it, it, right? it so you just out. had a feeling that this was his path yeah. and so we had to overparent him That's exactly yeah. you just you just did what you had to do um, and and before because a lot has happened since we were last together yeah. so this is kind of our catch up and reset episode um, we should say congrats to Max because oh yeah he's engaged yes, he to is. a fabulous woman An amazing amazing, amazing. Woman. yes i love kathleen shout out kath. shout out kath yep they are um love her so you've got two sons you're yeah. about to get two more two daughters yes yes Just within the what next calendar year can we call it that? Well, we'll see. Calendar? We'll see. Like, definitely, sorry. definitely. Christian and Olivia will get married this off season for sure. And Max and Kat, they're both, and she works for Formula One down in Miami, which is so fun. So um, awesome. they are working so hard. They barely see each other. So I don't know if they'll be able to get a wedding in on the books this off season. Um, and by off, like, you know, we go yearly calendars, our football calendar. <laughs> so when, when I, that's pretty pathetic, but as soon as football's done this year, I think they'll go into planning mode and I have a feeling it'll be pushed back until the, fi the final, the year after that, I think. I got it. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, because I think th that would probably be better too, though, to have one wedding this off season and the next. It would be easier on the, on, on, on for us, you. but, but for we you. were willing to easy. do it, ready to go if they wanted to do it, whatever they want. Hey, I'm the member, I'm the mother of the grooms. 
Go and down, just wear beige. Wear beige. That's my job. So <laughs> you're so good. I mean, I feel like that's so you. That's come so natural. Right. I just. Like, I'm such a wallflower. Like a wallflower. Just sit there. Like I have no say whatsoever. Yeah. I'm like, wait, what? Like no one has any idea what you're thinking ever. <laughs> Um, uh, but I'm excited. I, I really am. It's an exciting time. And I know, again, we haven't really been able to talk too much about it. We had the one episode, but it was, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. And I think as you, as your kids get older, I imagine in all of these different chapters of life, like this one is, is a pretty cool one to be able to see your kids find their people. Yes, it is. It's pretty, it's very amazing. Welcoming into our family. And then we get to know their family. It's like, you have all these, like this big families that just kind of melds and it's so fun. And I love them so far. Everything is awesome. So let's go. Okay. Enough about them and their engagements. What about what's Collins doing? <laughs> just, he's not getting married yet. He's not. Oh, darn it. Wait, didn't he? Wait, no, Cora had the hot boyfriend. Cora, well, Cora's interested. She's got some love interests. That girl, it, she's multiple love interests. I love it. Yeah, she, there's there are a few that she has her eye on. So, God, God bless, God speed to all of those <laughs> young boys out there. <laughs> and we will go over the wish you luck. remedy at the end of the show. Okay, Collins. <laughs> Oh God. Well, I'm going to have to put them to work because, um, I guess we should get into this now since, since we were last together, uh, we, we manifested, I should say you manifested last yeah. year that I would lose my job right. so that I could focus solely on the podcast. And you had to take down like a hundred year old conference to make it happen, but it worked. It like worked. You, I know. You be, and, but be careful what you wish for too. But no, it did. I'm so happy. Yay. Yay. You never well it. folded. So Ashley could could get not have a job and just full time podcast. Yay. <laughs> Sorry about everybody else that lost their job and how all, all the people had screwed over, but yay, I got what I wanted. You got what you wanted. You got you managed. Never in a million oh, years man. would I have predicted that. In a million. It's you know, and I've, I've, uh, we haven't talked about it on, obviously on this platform. Um, so I, I, I would love to spend just a little bit of time on it, but I really think it, what you said, Lisa, like no one could have ever predicted this. I think there were, for anyone that has paid attention to the college landscape or to, uh, sports rights and media and all of that, I mean, anything, if you have followed any of it at all, you will know that the PAC 12 is folding uh, at the end of this academic year. So June 30th, officially the Pac-12 will be no more. And you played in the Pac-12, I guess it was the Pac-10 when you were at Stanford. But this is a conference that, um, again, I just never in a million years, even after USC and UCLA announced and kind of shocked everybody a year ago that they were going to the Big Ten, never in a million years, Lisa, did I think that it would get to this. They're, they're just, Same. and it was so close to having a deal done with Apple. Uh, we all went to bed the night of August 3rd, I guess it was, um, after all of these reports and crazy things and what was gonna happen. And and the nine remaining schools, so Colorado had left to go to the Big 12, so there were nine remaining schools. We all went to bed that night thinking that there was gonna be an announcement on August 4th that said that the nine were sticking together and that they were signing a deal with Apple and that it was a pretty great deal. Um, not obviously the Big 10 money, but uh, a really good deal with a lot of upside. And that morning, all of a sudden we get our all staff meeting pushed back and then it's pushed back again. And then, you know, you start getting all of these messages and the next thing, you know, uh, pretty much everybody is out. So Oregon state and Washington state remain, and there's a lot that's up in the air, but I think, I mean, on the serious note, like it has been, just this emotional roller coaster. And I know in the grand scheme of what's going on in the world, like a, a college conference folding is, is not, um, doesn't even rank with a lot of the stuff that people are dealing with right now. So I will acknowledge that, but I, I really, it affects you and you I wasn't, acknowledge that. And people, yeah, uh, I just wasn't prepared for how emotional it yeah, is. Yeah. And people you've been working with for 11 years now, and they're like family to you. You probably some, yeah. some week totally spend time with them and study your family all, all weekend, you know? 100%. And I, I've, I've had some people and I, I will say like, so we've been doing our football show and I've been really grateful that we've got to have this last year because there was a world in which most people in this industry, industry, when the lights go off in broadcasting, um, like you're out, you're done. There's, there's no more, you don't get your key card just stops working. So the fact that we kind of have this, I've been calling it like our senior year and a chance to be able to go to the campuses one more time. You know, we travel every weekend for a football show um, and we get to, you know, we'll still do our basketball tournaments in Las Vegas in March. But 
I, I'm so grateful for that because a lot of people don't, you know, you don't get to know that it's kind of your last run. But the thing that I wasn't prepared for was how emotional every single Friday I show up on a campus to include, you know, I was at Cal last weekend and I just, I feel like I want to cry every time. Like I just, I, you know, cause I don't know, I don't know what's next. And I am, I know that everybody will land on their feet and that the schools will work it out. And I, I'm confident that Oregon state and Washington state, I just hope and pray that they're going to be in situations that are tenable um, and that the league can stay alive in some form, because by the way, everybody's going to come back. I just think that this thing is cyclical yeah. and people are going to be tired of playing softball games in Piscataway, New Jersey. Right. Uh, but Thanks. I, I have been any sense but to your point, Lisa, like it's, these people have been my family for 11 years and, um, it's just weird to, to now be looking around. And somebody said to me the other day, they were like, I, uh, I don't know if I'm ever going to see you again. <laughs> on one of the campuses. And I was like, that's kind of a weird thing to say, but you know what? You're probably, you're probably right. right. Yeah. You're probably right. And that's really sad. So it's been emotional. Um, but I also think the best part about it is that it's made me appreciate it more. You know, when you, yeah. It's good you have this time to almost like like a farewell yeah. tour type thing that you get to go. See. Totally, that's exactly what it is. And the campuses have been awesome. Good. I'm People sure, been great. of course. I bet they. Yeah, they're they're probably. Just- there was only one fan base that was not all that kind of one of our production crews, but other than that, everyone's been. Unbelievable. Which one? Spill the beans. If it was my alma alma mater, I'll call somebody. No, no, no. <laughs> they Stanford has been fan- phenomenal. We're actually going down there for the big game. Oh, uh, cool. So we haven't been there. Yet. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, I will. Re- I will just say every fan base has both yes. those fans, right? Sure. Like every fan base has the great ones that are supportive and what, and the ones that you're just like, wow, nasty. Yeah. Okay. Really? Yeah. You've got what do you what who hurt you? Right. Like, right. What, who hurt you? you and why are you, you want to talk? Yeah. And hug. Right. No. There's I, trust um, me, There's some of those in the NFL. Yeah. Just turn on Twitter. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No kidding. No kidding. Um, so yeah, so it's been, it's been a lot. And I think the one thing is though, is that it's been a good reset for me to try to figure out. And I've been telling a lot of my colleagues this too, like we have a runway where we know, you know, I'm officially done again this summer. And so you've got a little bit of a runway to be really purposeful and thoughtful about what you want to do next and not right. just immediately takes the next thing or j- jump ship. So I, I do, Um, I am grateful for a lot of it. And I mean, I'm grateful for all of it. And as sad as I am, I think that the feeling that I have more than anything is just gratitude because it's been like this place, this conference and this network totally changed my life. Like I, when I moved to San Francisco 11 years ago, I was living in my brother's basement. I was single. I was very like in a lot of debt. I was, my life was on the career side was like, things were looking up, but everything else was a freaking mess. Wow. Um, and now, you know, it's just, it's allowed me to totally transform my life. Obviously I got married, had two kids. I live next door to my brother now. I may go back to living in his basement in a few months. We'll see. <laughs> That's okay. Full circle. Yeah, it's fine. It was a great too. basement. I've still got some stuff down there. So that hey, would be We have easy plenty of room by. here too. All the kids moved out. Done. We're here. That's true. A yeah. lot of room. You can have your own bathroom. Can I have, yeah. Can I have Dylan's room? hundred percent. You can have Dylan's room. Yes. Okay. Yeah all yours. Yep. It's the, yeah, perfect. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but I got to ask you, Lisa, like what, I mean, I'm sure for everybody that's even played in that conference. Yeah. And I think it's, it, it shows you what college, like the bigger issues in college athletics. And that's, yeah. there are plenty of podcasts that talk about that. We don't need to get into those issues, but like, I just think for parents <laughs> and for kids who have come through and played for these schools and for all the ones who committed to these schools, thinking that they were going to be playing in certain regions and certain schools, it just, I don't know. What what was your reaction? What was Christian's reaction when you guys heard about it? Yeah, it was kind of shocking that that it's it's disbanding. I mean, and then Stanford in particular, I can speak for Stanford, they joined the ACC, which makes absolutely no sense. Like they're, you know, girls soccer, I'll take that because that's what I'm familiar with. You know, if we have two games yeah. a week and they're, you know, they're ones in like Carolina and ones in Florida, like it's, it's, doesn't even compute. It doesn't make sense for all the other sports. And that's what's so tragic about it. Um, and I know football is the biggest moneymaker and helps supports all the other schools, which is great, but this is not in the best interest of the kids, of the student athletes that they claim to be, you know, caring about. It's it's all money. And, and that's what's disappointing is nobody's like really in it for the kids. But I don't know, it's almost become like a like college football is more like professional football at this stage of the game is what it is. Yeah, so. 100%. And I know, again, like, so. it's, 
I don't know how you fix it, but I do, I will say, I've heard some people who are much smarter than me suggest, and it makes sense to me, make college football its own thing. Yes. And have it governed by someone. That knows what they're doing, governed there. by somebody on its own that knows what they're doing. Yeah. and Governed by Lisa McCaffrey, yeah. somebody who knows what they're doing <laughs> and can make all the rules. Absolutely. Uh, and then have the other schools compete as they should. Right. Um, or the other teams. So I, yeah, I, yeah. It's it's wild to see how fast it's all changed. And I think back to, you know, when I think about Ed, I'm just, I look at some of these, I've got some good friends who are in coaching and it's the college level. The, I have a friend who just went to the NFL last year and his wife was like, we have so much time. Like yeah. this, he's oh, home totally. all the time. Oh, like, Max, is, Max, Max went from is. college to, to pros too. And he's like, yeah. he's like, wow. He goes, our off seasons are, you know, pretty big. We don't have to recruit. Yeah. Ed, Ed said, he goes, I would never coach college again in my life. It's a mess. It's a mess. No. And I think you're going to, a lot of really good people are going to make that same decision because it is, um, what you're doing now as a college coach, a head coach, especially is not what you signed no. up to do. It's no. not why you're, you're a manager. You're business. like, yeah, you're like, it's, yeah. it's not exactly. You're trying to rate your fundraising. You're getting NIL collectives exactly. done. Like it's just, you're recruiting. It's, it's, in, it's over the top what they're doing. Yeah. It's more exactly. Yeah. It's more gathering NIL, recruiting players and, and getting the players to come based on how much they're going to get. Cause now that's, that's the, that's what's the bottom line pretty much for a lot of the colleges. They'll, they'll, a kid will go based on where he's going to get the most money. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. And you, and you either for the for the people who are able to raise a lot of money um, and have big donors who are willing to spend a lot of money. And I'm curious to see, like, will the market correct itself eventually? Because some of these donors, I mean, I know somebody who spent a lot of money on one kid who has not played half of a game. Wow. Yeah. You know, because that's the other thing, too. There's no guarantee that, that they're going to either start or play or stay healthy or, or any or stay so, at the school. Or stay at the I school. I know a couple of whether they paid him a lot of money and the kid ended up transferring after a year and then made money yeah. somewhere else. So yep. It's wild. wild. And I'm all for I'm for NIL. Like yeah. I love No, the same, fact but I think there needs to be some able to make money, rules but... and regulations with it and there across needs. the board. And they just need a strong govern governance some somewhere. A strong Lisa McCaffrey governance. Hundred percent. I will run it really. and I'll run it smoothly. We'll have good, clear, defined rules where yes, players can benefit. Absolutely. I'm all for it. But at the same time, let's just, come on. It's the wild west right now. You'd be a great commissioner. Like you, I could just really? see you in all these different like power suits. Yeah. Not a yeah. T shirt, yeah. my workout t shirt. Picture me in like a, like a sharp blazer. I'm, that's what I'm, I'm doing. Probably I'm pulling my hair back. Right. Really Don't you think pull it back in a little yep. bun so I look really smart? Get like, Gorgeous, like navy. I'm yeah. thinking, like ta perfectly tailored. But I don't want it to Girls. just navy. I want it to like a little flare to look like. Oh, okay. yeah, maybe with like some fun. gold. Yeah, yeah, and then you would open it up, and it would just be like tigers on the inside. Well, no, because I don't want them to think I'm partial to like LSU with a tiger. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, so hearts. Um, hearts. What would you? Like? Oh yeah, hearts would be good. Or unicorns, love. maybe. Are there any <laughs> unicorns? <laughs> unicorns. That would go over. just whatever is the power. You know what? The most powerful. important thing is my outfit. If I become the commissioner of the yeah, new, brand exactly. new college football. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're yeah. announcing it now. This is running. Yeah, yeah. We um, so it, there is there is a lot going on, and and it feels, uh, you know, scary yeah. for sure. If I'm being honest, and I've never I've had this job this entire you know for 11 years which is amazing that I've shows been, how good which you are amazing. yeah that you've had it for 11 years because most people in your profession don't don't last that long at all and yeah, yeah. and the fact they kept you on until june is very is pretty amazing it, i hope you feel validated that you've done it. i do yeah. thank you i i do I, I, pac I is not folding really because great. of you by any means <laughs> that's i think that's why the pac-12 stayed alive for the last five years solely because of you Maybe it was going to fold five years really ago. They're like, but Ashley Adams is our yeah, like, uh, well. Like her kids are so young. Let's give her another five. Come on, years. yeah, another. We got to do it. So, and then that bitch came in and oh. manifested to, for everything to fold, so she can lose her job. Ah, oh. <laughs> the timing really is incredible, though. I mean, it's it just, yeah. things things fall into place. Things fall apart, so things can fall together. Yeah, and that right. I do think that is true. It is painful. It is sad. There's a lot of. I think there's going to be a lot of teams that feel. Um, buyer's remorse about the decisions that they've made. And again, yeah. it wasn't the coaches and the student athletes yeah. who made the decisions. It was uh, yeah, a lot of different people. Good. And now yeah. those people are going to be the ones that have to sort of navigate through this. And I hope they get, world. sorry, but I hope they get called out and like, you know, acknowledge what they've done. Cause there's some particular players that have kind of 
messed it up a little bit. So because of ego and money and whatnot. So hubris was a big part of this Greek tragedy of the Pac-12. Yeah. I'll, I'll leave it at that uh, on many levels. And it wasn't just one thing or one moment or one. I mean, it was the forces were real and they were coming together for a long time. It was like we were all walking around on a volcano that was about to erupt and maybe people didn't quite realize that it was at that bubbling point yet. Right. So, um, right. but I, I am to just underscore it. Like you said, at least I, I do feel validated and I am very grateful because they could have, um, they could have made a lot of different decisions right. and they have been very good to me. And I know that the people who put together, you know, trying to figure out again, there's so much behind the scenes that people don't even think about of what's going on right now. Um, and the people who put together the, okay, this is, these are the employees that we're going to try and take care of. And this is how we're going to do it. And this is what it's going to look like. It, it was a impossible puzzle to solve, but I think a, a lot of people, um, are going to go do different things now. And sometimes you need to get pushed off the ledge. And so right. here I am off the cliff yeah. and we will see what's next, but I'm excited Good. for, you know, kind of a new, a new chapter and an opportunity. Cause I've never been a mom. Like what I was going to say is I've never been a mom um, or I've never had a family when I've made a job change. Like I, right. when I was changing jobs and, you know, working my way up through local news when I first got out of college, yeah. like it was just, okay, where, where, we, where are you willing to live? Right. And then exactly. Just Cause now it. you have this There's anchor no there that limits right. you a little, can, can limit you a little bit if you're not willing to move totally. or whatever. So yeah, this is, I can't wait to see where you land and it's going to be awesome and it's going to be better. I promise. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. And, and one of the things that I do want to touch on before we, cause there's again, a thousand different things that we could still talk about, but we have a whole, we have a whole season to, to yeah, get in and back. dive into some stuff. But one of the things I will say that we learned from last year, um, and I really mean this and we were joking about it right before we started recording, but I was a better daughter mm -hmm. and maybe a better mom, but definitely a better daughter when we were doing this podcast last year. And, and I think the power of being able to create real space and time in your day, in your week, like that cadence of it, of where you're just reflecting on motherhood and talking to moms and thinking about how, like, what's important and how did, how did these things line up in our lives and asking moms how they did it. I really feel like I was a way better version of myself as a daughter. And then as soon as we stopped, you know, we stopped down for the summer, I was like, oh you man. You became a bitch like, again to your mom. Yeah, I was like such a bitchy daughter all of a sudden again. <laughs> I yeah. Uh, but did you find that? Yes, I, mean, I, I think that and they, it's hard because I don't have you know the it. kids are gone, like not living in the day to day house. But it did. It just it made me more present when I was with them. A and and like thoughtful. Like okay, what are their needs? What would they want out of their mom at this stage? And right. reverse, I thought about my mom a lot, and I became a better daughter to her. Um, like you did. I wasn't. Well, I was never bitchy to my mom ever. So. <laughs> Big mom. That's just, yeah, yeah that. shout out her birthday's Friday. Everybody me. send her something. Yeah. <laughs> 86. She's turning 86. But yeah, I, it, I did. I was more intentional. I was more thoughtful. I was a better daughter. And I thought of my mom as more of a human being and more of a person rather than a mom, mother figure in a way. And we um, bonded way. We, our bond is way stronger after doing this. That's for sure. So. Yeah. And I, and, and that is so important. And I think what I want our listeners to know and to feel is that it's really, it's really hard, even no matter, you know, how intentionally you think you are or what you're trying to do. It is like a recommitment every day. And, and through this podcast, you know, what we got to do last year, every week to really show up and think about this stuff and make space for it. Because guess what? We all know what our to-do lists look like, you know, yeah. they just grow and grow and grow and you fill your <laughs> days with stuff, stuff that other people need from you, or, you know, you just, it's, it's a lot. And so to carve out this like sort of sacred space is, it was more powerful than I even realized. And I think we knew going into last year, we didn't know anything when we started last year, obviously that was pretty clear. Um, but yourself. Think, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, we did. That's true. You were a pro, right? Yeah, from are you young. kidding? Uh, but I knew we were going to learn a lot. And that yeah. was, that was definitely one of my biggest takeaways was just like, wow, it is important to have the time and the space to like think about some of this stuff. And then the other thing that was so powerful to me was what we heard from all of the moms afterwards That's who, by fast. the way, before we would bring them on would say, I don't know how we're going to talk for half right. an hour. I don't have anything oh, to yeah. for like 30 or 45 minutes. And then we'd have to be cutting it off at like, you know, Over 90 minutes. Right. Right. No, it was insane. And um, that was, that was amazing. That was so funny. And we're, and we're still friends with those moms today. Totally. It's that's so wonderful. There, I mean, I mean amazing. Moms. What do you can you recall like one story that like you think about or you or stuck with you like 
poignant, funny. There are so yeah. many, there are so many moments where just, I will hear someone's voice pop up in my head. Um, like I hear Marilyn Plummer telling me to like, <laughs> go stop doing the dishes and go play with your yes. kids. Like there have been multiple times that I have stopped doing whatever I felt like I needed to do and clean up the house and folding laundry and just like, okay, go play trains or go color for like 10 minutes even. And it matters. I also think about, um, Oh, Marsha Leaf, what yeah. she said about everything she went through with her son, Ryan. And uh, yeah. if you haven't listened to that episode, by the way, that was, I think, our very first, maybe our first interview uh, after, after Chris. Chris yeah. And she, one of the things she said that, again, just stuck with me was she said, I, it's not what you go through, it's how you go through yeah. it together. Right. And that, We're all, you know, when she's standing shoulder to shoulder with her, um, with her son through it all yeah. and that nobody's perfect and parents make mistakes all the time. And so do kids, but like how you get through it and how you show up is what matters. And I think those are, I don't know. Those that are one, that things. one was what I was going to say is Marshall visiting her son every week in prison and how hard that mm -hmm. was. And it take her two days to, to decompress and come out yeah. of it yeah. almost the hangover, yep, the hangover, the, the prison hangover. No, it was, that was really, really powerful and really emotional. So like when I get mad at my kid and I'm like pissed at him, I'm like, I still need to be there for him. You know? Like, yeah, like, totally. No, that's exactly right. And that's a hard line to kind of, yeah, I, I, I completely agree in the way that she talked about dealing with a lot of that was good. And now Ryan, shout out Ryan. Yeah, he's killing, um, killing yeah. He's doing unbelievably well. He's got an amazing broadcast career and he's doing so many unbelievable motivational speakings around, you know, all these different programs around the country. And he and his yeah. wife are about to have a little girl. I love, I know. And I know they, they've got one son yeah. who's just the adorable mm -hmm. and huge. Oh my God. He's probably going to be a football player. He's just massive, but MacGyver is his That's name. That's it. I knew it had a fun. Yeah. yeah. MacGyver. And yeah. they, and now he's going to have a, a, you know, daughter and, and he's shared publicly. So I don't feel like I'm saying anything that's not out there, but they, you know, I think it was a struggle for them to have another child and it's like the answered prayer. Yeah. And so I'm so happy. I've not reached out to Marsha, but I, I need to. Once I heard that news recently, I'm I'm happy for them. Yes. So the road is long, right? Like it's whatever you're going through right now, parents, if you're listening to this, like whatever thing feels hard, yes, it is hard and it will it'll pass. It will get better. It'll this get, too shall pass. pass. Yeah. And, and there will be something. One thing I, I never realized going through it is each stage is not as long as you think. Like each right. stage of life, it gets, they get a little longer as they get older, but oh my gosh, I just remember it being so physical when they were all little, like it's just, I was exhausted at the end of the day. I, I couldn't get in my bed fast enough. And I would just remember, and then that would, that slowly got a little easier as each one, you know, you know they, each one would potty train and then they'd get older and then yeah. part, some would go to school and it just slowly got easier and easier. So I wish I knew that. Cause I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is just so hard. This is never going to end. I'm just physically drained. And, but it does. It always you think it's your whole life forever. Right. You know, exactly. when you're in and then it, it, re it changes your, your priorities yeah. change and your worries change. And you know, even those, they don't last forever either. It always is changing. It's still to this day, it's always changing for, you know, but hopefully for the better. So some for the better, some for the more worries, but that's life. Bigger kids, bigger problems exactly. is what somebody told me the other day. They were like, enjoy these problems right now yeah. when they're little. Cause you can the fact that Cora is a little hungover like, for some, can from some candy. That's going to be all right. She's yeah. going to be all right tomorrow. Yeah. She'll be fine. I know, but I haven't found cigarettes in her Halloween bag. Exactly. Yet, so There's no heroin or something. Um, but I, I would say the very last thing is the, 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 one of the other things that really struck for me from last year that I was probably one of my biggest takeaways, um, and, and has really helped me as I'm thinking about what I want to do next, but it was a sentiment that we heard from almost every mom that we had on, which was like, thank you for letting me take that trip down memory lane for thinking about all of these life experiences that I haven't thought about in so long. Uh, and for just asking, I mean, I remember Chris Darnold yeah. saying like, thank you for asking because nobody ever. Right. Asked. Yes. Yes. And that is so powerful. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, you know, everybody deserves. And it's fascinating to learn her story, her story and her husband's yes. story and how they have this superstar, you know, what, what made him the superstar? How did she get to this point? You know, and I, yep. I'm, I laugh. I'm like, I'm, I'm doing a little social experiment over here. Is it nature or nurture more nature or more nurture? And that's my goal for this podcast. Try to figure out, I have no idea what it is still. It's, you know, just listening to all these moms, I thought I'd be able to figure it out by now, but no, because every one of these moms, the common denominator is that they love their children, un, children unconditionally, unconditionally, yep. but they all parent very different. Every one of them that we had on parents, very different because there's no, doesn't it make you feel better though? I yeah. like to me yes. as someone who was like, what's the key? Yeah. I'm going to read these books and I'm going to start a podcast so I can find yeah. out. And then you realize when you talk to all of them, you're like, oh man, you know what? There is no blueprint because you just, you show up, you do the best you can. You love the hell out of your kids. Mm -hmm. 
and you take care of yourself. I yes. Think that's and which a lot of moms like, don't. Is a lot, yeah. Don't which do. is very, because yep. then you show up as a better mom. You're way better. Totally. You're more perfect. Yeah. I was, I was listening to Andrew Luck gave a keynote speech at this event I was at for work the other day. And he was talking about it was, it was the way he put it. I was like, I know I've heard this message before, but the way he put it resonated differently. So I'll share it right now. But he said, when I was with the Colts, he said, when I, I finally realized that if I'm asking them to be like, to show up and be these versions of these teammates, like I need to be that for them. Right. And so the best thing that I can do for my teammates is show up as the best version of myself. So that means that like when I'm getting my sleep and I'm eating right and I'm keeping, I'm doing this stuff, I'm doing it for my teammates. I'm not doing it for me. Like we feel like it's selfish to, you know, self-care, Yeah. but it is truly, you want to show up as the best version of yourself for the people around you. So for all of the like super selfless moms that kill themselves right. and feel guilty because they're not like you're not doing you that. actually are doing this, that self-care, that massage, that workout class, that walk, that, that yoga, nap, whatever, yeah. manicure, that mat nap. Like you're doing that so that you can be the best version of yourself for your family. Right. And I think that's just a twist that we all need to be able to make in our minds because it 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 wasn't until like freaking Andrew Luck said it that I was like, oh yeah, you know what? That makes sense. This isn't just about me. Uh, even though on the surface it is, but like, it's about me showing up as a better version of right. myself. Ow, wait, my back's really sore right now. Cause you just dropped, yeah. you just that dropped that name on me. So, oh, it kills me. So yeah, not that you're a name dropper. So anyway, so, oh, so you met Andrew Luck. Cool. Look at you. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Um, he played at a small school on the, on the West coast. He wasn't, you know, oh, that's so funny. Congratulations on knowing him. I'm proud of you. I don't know him, I, by the way. I just, I just was. Oh, oh cool. I wasn't so, there. Yeah. I was at home, probably like I don't know, making like knitting a. Sweater you were probably kid. getting a massage and doing self care, <laughs> or knitting a sweater for my kid because I'm so sacrificial. <laughs> <laughs> knitting all my so scarves, all my scarves that I'm going to give them for Christmas. But go ahead, go listen to. Me. Uh, but carry on, carry on. Yeah, <laughs> who else have you hung out with recently? Uh, no, but I, I do. I, I will say just the notion of giving moms the space to like, Hey, your stories matter. And it's not just about, we don't want to know, but just about your kids. Like everybody right. knows about your famous kids. We want to know about you mm -hmm. and your life story and what made you, you. And so that, I think I say all that to say this, that's going to be a, a big theme for season two, as we look to like figure out how we're going to keep this going and, and what we want to evolve and change and add. And that said, we're going to have, and I mentioned it in the tease, but um, Chantal Balo, who is an executive coach who I think I've talked about this on this podcast before. She's a mama three. She lives in Oakland. She I've done work with her for like the last six or seven years. Um, and she is incredible at, at helping people understand like the stories that we're telling ourselves all the time without even realizing it and how that impacts what we do. And I think moms need that more than anything. And then we also brought on uh, our phenomenal and Lisa's new favorite person on the planet, uh, Betsy Bloom, because she's got the best name, mm -hmm. as our executive producer. So Betsy's going to pop in just here at the end to say hello, um, Betsy. Hello. Thank you for doing this. Betsy's like, thank you for asking. So tune in just to see Betsy because she's like young and cute. That's good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's really, we just needed some younger blood on this. Podcast. And more important, she's a teacher. Two she's freshmen teacher. in high school. So St. Saint, Saint Betsy. Well, thank you for campaigning for the day after Halloween to be a national holiday. Let's <laughs> let's have this rise up the ranks. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna make a sign and go start protesting to the school board of the world. <laughs> the school board of the world. Yeah. In your amazing chic, um, yeah. you know, power suit that you have for your commissioner job as exactly. well. Exactly. Like, people are gonna really. Yeah. You're about to change the world. One hundred percent. Let's go. Let's manifest that. Let's go. Uh, well, yeah. Change. I mean, one of my takeaways from just listening to you is that women should run everything, specifically moms. We've been saying that. Yeah. Amen. I think so too. My brother actually said that the other day, and I was like, I, I agree. We're 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 in a patriarchy, but I I agree. Mom, moms should run stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You because I mean, on a serious note, as you were talking about the Pac-12 and. You're thinking about the kids. You're thinking about the student athletes and the coaches and everybody who's connected to the kids. And I feel this so much as a teacher. Yeah. Um, you know, like the people who are on the ground know what's best for the kids. It's the people who are in the ivory tower making the decisions that are not necessarily connected to those conversations that are are the ones that, you know, might make a bad decision because they're not thinking about the consequences. So well, that was yeah, absolutely it was amazing to me how true that is no matter the situation. If you're thinking about the kids first, yeah. then you're probably going to make the right choice 
if but you're guess, guess what? Industry. I think you're thinking about the dollar sign. I don't yeah. money, money, the money, Benjamins. Money. Right. Money, Show me the money. money. On these, yeah. On these. Yeah. yeah. No, I Betsy, you're you're spot on. Um, wait, yeah, also right. we should tell Betsy because so that she can be further impressed with Ed McCaffrey. Oh. What what poem does Ed know? Oh, by the heart? man in the he arena. The man in the arena one. No, the man in the arena, but then doesn't he also know Edgar Allan Poe? Yeah, he knows Raven um, too. I'm so proud. Raven. Yeah. He's a modern day wow. He's Or he just memorizes really good poems from like years past. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you told me that last year on our first episode, I was like, I, that of all the things that you could have said that would have like impressed me the most, I think that was number one. Does he want to zoom in to my class so I can be like, listen, poetry is cool. And yeah. I will this is it. really cool. He will, he will make it cool. No, they're going to take one like, look. You think you're like, too cool for poetry? You think you're cooler than this person? <laughs> yeah. With three Super Bowl rings who can recite the Raven from heart? Like, Never yeah. more. <laughs> yeah. Shut up, Harry, and do your homework. <laughs> He'll whip them into shape. Uh, Betsy, we're we're excited to have Thanks, you Betsy. on board and, and guiding the ship. So thank you for for doing this and agreeing and saying yes. I should say I know Betsy, and we'll we'll get into in, there in a few weeks. We'll do a, I'll do a full interview with Betsy, so people get the full uh, deep dive. But our husbands are best friends, I should say. Um, and now they're kind of out, yeah, or whatever. And now this is just Secondary. all about Betsy and I. So yeah. Yeah. So Mac, her husband was our, was the best man at our wedding oh, cool. and gave the most unbelievable, a speech that people still talk about all the time because it wasn't a speech. It was, um, like 10 karaoke songs. No sang about way. I want to hear him. I want to see that video. That'll be our yes, next yeah, podcast. We'll just, be the video we'll just play that. Just it that. exists yeah. because I have, list, have been, um, encouraged to listen to it several times. I have been encouraged <laughs> to listen wow. to it. I never have. Wow. Lucky you. Yeah. <laughs> The best part is the night before he asked us, uh, like, I remember at a rehearsal dinner, he was like, so how much like time do you think I have for the speech? I'm like, I mean, it's about like yeah. five minutes, like seven minutes if you want that, but don't like shorter is better. No one wants to listen to long speech. He was like, okay. So he went, he apparently had like twice as many songs no, no. It planned. And so he cut out like 10 of the songs. So it was, it was a performance. It was a show. Well, for your awesome. 50th, he'll, he'll bring out the extended sure. tracks, the B-sides. I love it. And wait, Betsy, you guys weren't dating back then when they were getting married then? No, I, I, I really wish that I, we had been for many reasons. I wish I had right. met him sooner, but I've also heard that Ashley and Chris's wedding was the most fun it, wedding. Of I've seen pictures. It looked amazing. It was a good time. Yeah. yeah. It was a damn good time. There were a lot of wigs, um, a lot of singing, a lot of songs, a lot of performances. It was great. It was as it should be. Yeah. As it should be, as it should be. Okay, so Betsy, um, first of all, is there anything that we, this is what we should do at the end of every episode. I'm going to ask you if we said anything that wasn't true and you have to fact check. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've been uh, searching over here. I've got, like, I hope you're fact checking all of us as we go. Yeah, yeah cause, but then you'll be like, well, pretty much everything you said is bullshit. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would say we've talked about how we're going to end this. And I, I want to let you set it up because you were the one that had this idea. And I think it's a beautiful idea. And it, it harkens back to the point we were making earlier, which is we need to create space to like tell people what they mean, to be able to think about what people have meant to us, and then to say it out into the world. And and we now have a platform because we made up this little podcast to do that. So tell, tell everyone your idea. Yeah. So um, my idea is to end every episode with a moment of gratitude. And I was thinking about what you guys were saying about self-care, because I think gratitude is self-care and it's great for others as well as ourselves. So practicing gratitude makes us feel better and it also makes people around us feel better. So I I think that it's a great practice for us to implement and hopefully everyone listening at home will will do it as well and call your mom, tell her you love her. Yes. <laughs> yeah. cool. Amen. That's right. Call your mom, call a mom, call any mom. Okay, so how are we going to do this? We're just going to each shout out uh one person who's who we're grateful for in our lives is that is that we'll, we'll start there and see we need to come up with like a witty name i know what which will lisa will come yeah, up with I was one just say, lisa, you're our resident <laughs> wit i can see her i can seal the wheel the smoke's know, coming know, out of her. pressure's on I'll, we'll think of something good yeah um but yeah so all right do you want you betsy you want to go first you have somebody in mind yeah so i actually um i'm breaking my own rule but i have like sort of like thank a you you're welcome oh, oh never mind. i thought you were gonna pick me my bad. <laughs> yeah you know coming into this day i didn't even know lisa and now but i am grateful for, for you lisa. switched you switched um no so um my husband and i recently moved and we spent the summer painting and 
doing all sorts of house stuff. And so we haven't really had anyone over and we had a Halloween party this weekend that was also a housewarming party. And it was, I just felt so grateful to our friends who showed up. Like it's great having a party in your thirties because everyone brings nice wine and cheese. Yeah. Um, and you know, I had that like butterfly feeling of what if no one comes to my party? Um, and then people came and they were in full costume and they were so Love enthusiastic it. and it, it just made us feel really loved and warmed by their presence. So I'm grateful to the chosen family that I, that we've made here. I love that. And I will say as someone who was at Betsy and Max wedding, like I, that was how I fell in love with Betsy because I'm listening to the, I've never heard anyone talk about a bride in the way that every single one of your friends, both at the rehearsal dinner and at the wedding, I was like, wow, it it was that feeling. And we were kind of laughing about it, but I I mean this in like the best way. I'm like, I think every person who's given a speech, like actually wishes they were marrying Betsy. (laughs) I was going to say, I felt like it was like, I was also getting roasted. I was like, I thought it was supposed to be the group. (laughs) (laughs) No, like roasted from love, like a love roast. That's No, it was, you have a lot of great friends and you could tell like your relationships matter. So that's, that's great. I love that. I do know that feeling of having a party and being like, what if nobody shows up? Lisa doesn't know that. I have no idea. Like everybody shows up at ours. We have so many parties. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Lisa, you're up next. Uh, Who are you thankful for? I think I'm thankful today for Ashley's mom's womb. (laughs) Because it just had her and it made her like the person she is. That's where it all started. And look where we are. And I'm just so grateful and thankful for Ashley. And I'm so excited to resume this. And she's amazing. And I bet you, I I love you too, but I just met you. I couldn't pick you, but stay tuned. There will be plenty of time for us to shower (laughs) on each other. Um, You know what? On behalf of my mother's womb, Thank you. Sure. She, it was a great womb. <laughs> I you felt remember? very cared for. Yeah, I do. I remember. Isn't that so everyone's be, dream is just to crawl back in the womb? Just to crawl back into that womb. And just, you, don't have to, just, you don't have to do anything. Yeah, food you just know? like pops in your body. You're like, I'm hungry. You're just there. Yeah. You go to the bathroom whenever you want. Right. Like it doesn't it's like the matter. greatest place yeah. on earth. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> um, okay. Well, I, I you kind of stole mine. I was going to do a twofold. One, because it is your mom's birthday on Friday. Yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. shout out to big mama for producing the incredible specimen and human that is Lisa (laughs) McCaffrey. Um, and also your mom is just awesome. Like she, I'll text her every now and then I need, I haven't checked in with her in a little while, but like, she just gives me like so much. I don't know. Whenever I text her, I'm like, we're doing a thing. Like Betsy's on board. She's so happy. And she's so like grateful for the fact that we have a podcast. Betty. And did I just call her Betsy? It's Betty. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, yeah. I was like, yes. Yeah, I'm just I'm looking right. at I'm yeah. looking at Betsy and my my brain can't you remind me of my two mom. things at the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Betsy, you remind I, me of Betty Connor. Yeah, I'm honored. I feel like, yeah, you should cook for me and I don't know, get me some uh, dessert and cookies and milk and <laughs> tell me a story. Yeah, but I really, truly, I love your mom. She is amazing. And Lisa, you, you kind of stole my thunder. Cause I just, I, I want to say thank you to you oh. because I have been, um, all over the map the last several months with all the PAC 12 stuff going on and a lot of other things. Uh, and you just kind of hung with me through <laughs> all of it. And when I asked you to, Hey, I don't really know what this is going to look like. And I want to evolve it to do some more storytelling in case we end up starting this company on start, like all of these things behind the scenes that aren't even important enough to get into, but just, I want to say it out loud. Like mm. you just said yes. And I'm there and I'm excited. And so like, that is a gift. And to be sitting here, you know, doing this with you again, it feels great. It was way too many months off. And my mom is thankful to you because now I'm going to be a better daughter. And I'm totally. Be so bitchy to He's the one who was more. calling me. I wasn't even going to do it, but she's <laughs> for our relationship for the love of God. Oh, she's, she's a nightmare. She's so much better. She needs to get back to your podcast. podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I really am. I'm, I'm grateful to you. And I, I feel so good to be I don't know, just back doing this and the moms that we're going to talk to, I can't wait. And to see what unfolds. You think about what's happened in a year, like a year ago, we had just manifested that Christian was going to the Niners. I know. It's insane. It's crazy yeah. How much happens. Gosh, so, I, yeah. I can't wait to go back uh, do this for a year and then reflect on right now too. Again, it's kind of fun. Oh yeah. God. Yeah. What do you think it's going to, should we just make one prediction? Like, what do you think in a year, what do you think is going to be happening? <sighs> Careful, Lisa, you have a lot of power. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> like, I guess I do. Well, I don't, I want you, I want to manifest this podcast to make it so Ashley can just do this and not, not do any other job. And she can like focus and be feel, feel fulfilled and not drained. Thank you. Without having to live in, in a basement. And without, or um, maybe mine. Yeah. No, I want you to live in mine. Yeah. Okay. You want, okay. I hope that I'm living in your basement. That would be awesome. We'll bring, we'll bring Corin Collins. I'll cook for them. It'll be awesome. I also am going to manifest that we're doing some like spa retreat somewhere. Oh, yes. Yes. You know, like a podcast. Is that a thing? It should be. It should if there's be. not a market for like podcast or spa retreats, mm -hmm. then Pod there's, spa. there's the million dollar idea. Pod spa. Pod spa. Well, I, I do think that Mazda should be our sponsor. Um, so if you could get us a hookup and then Mazda can sponsor, we can have, you know, the Mazda spa weekend. Oh, McDonald's. see, this is why we brought oh Betsy on because she can connect just, all of these. Oh, my mind just exploded. That's amazing. Let's do it. Oh. It's amazing. God, I can't wait to go look at Mazda's. I'm coming to see you in a couple of weeks, Lisa. Yes, and I'll, I, I'll we, take you to the just, lot. I'll take you to the lot. We'll have Dylan you, show you around. It'll be amazing. Have Dylan I just and whatever I, you know, like I want the full. I, I've got all the roll down windows now. Like I want automatic. Oh, I want wow. The full, okay, I'll yeah. tell him that ahead of time so he'll pull the cars that have the automatic up and down. Okay. Yeah, and I assume you want the seatbelt to work. I want power windows. Power yeah, windows. Seatbelts, airbags. Seatbelt. Eh, whatever. Whatever he thinks. That's optional. I mean, okay. it's not fully, fully loaded. FM radio. On, AM so. and FM radio. Full podcaster. AM and FM. Yeah. Okay. I love you guys. It's oh my my cup is full. It's so good to be back. Yes, we're back. This, better. this is the time when I do wish, like, because it gets to the end of the podcast, and it's like I just we can't. I can never put the bow on it and wrap it up and say goodbye. This is when we actually do need someone being like, wrap it, yeah. wrap it up. Beth, Let's go. Get out. So go, Betsy. You can. Tell uh, we're me. cutting to commercial. So Every, all moms, deep breath, exhale. You're doing an amazing job. Go be present for your kids and keep up the good work. Mic drop. We'll see you next week. <laughs>